Hello and welcome to the Ask the Industry podcast, episode 124. I'm comedian Simon Kane, and for those of you new to the show, this is the podcast where I interview the most influential people from the worlds of stand-up, comedy, radio, and today, comedy promotion. David Allison is a comedy promoter well known for his highly themed improvised shows, most notably This Is Your Trial, the show where you put your friends on trial for something that they've done that has annoyed you. In this episode, it's a slightly different vibe. For those of you who don't know, my day job, I suppose is the best way way of describing because I do it during the day is I write funny jokes for social media um, for brands that want to appear more humorous on Twitter mainly but Facebook and Instagram. I do a lot of this for corporate clients but I also do a lot of social media consultancy for comedy clubs and promoters on how to use the platforms better. I tend to keep this side of my work quite quiet if I'm honest with you. I I didn't really want to be known for that. I want to be known as a comedian but it is something that I do and it's something that I'm proud of and it's something that I'm good at. So I thought you know what would be really interesting? Let's get someone on who has asked me to help them with their social media and record a session that we do to show how much thought and effort goes into social media behind the scenes on a club. Um, David originally got in touch with me and asked for an informal meeting in London about how we can work together and after an absolutely lovely chat I offered him the chance to come on the podcast and do another session to show what goes on behind the scenes when you are putting together a structured and strategic campaign to make your content hit the right people at the right times. That's what this pod is. It's not completely how I do these sessions normally. Um, There's still a lot of the Q&As that I would normally do for a podcast that you know and love, but I want to flag that this one is a little bit more freeform than my other episodes for that specific reason. If you want to talk to me about social media writing, either jokes or otherwise, or consultancy work, you can contact me via my email address, which is simon.m.kane at gmail.com, or you can buy my book. It's called How to Make a Living by Working for Free, where I interviewed comedians, writers, musicians, and so much more about how they built their own audience online through free content, and then they asked their audience to support them to keep creating things for them. You can get that at my website, which is simonkane.co.uk forward slash shop, or you can find the link in the show notes. I think that's everything. I think that's everything. Before I hit play, if you're new here, please do not forget to hit that subscribe button. If you're old here, please do consider giving us an honest, ideally positive review in iTunes. And either way, please do join the Facebook group. It's called RC Industry podcast obviously but for now this is david allison levels great okay so you've listened to it before um so i don't need to do too much of an intro but basically i would normally do an intro and post and then cut it and then uh you so basically i, I asked the person to incorporate the first question into their answer so the first voice the person that the, the yeah. listener hears yeah. is yours um so i figured if we start with what you do in terms of the shows you run and and beyond the fringe so like the corporate stuff and what you're moving into and uh why may, I, I figure it's probably worth you explaining why we originally met up before the festival just so that how this came about so from your perspective and what you wanted i mean what why did we meet what was um <laughs> well okay okay right i'm shall i shall i t- shall i say who i am yes yeah i'm i'm dave allison and i would say i'm a producer that's which covers a lot of bases. Of so I've, I've been a producer of all sorts of different things for the last 20 years, really. Started with TV and documentaries and then corporate, corporate filming, education, filming. But um, fundamentally, I, I'm good at originating ideas and then making something out of it. And mm. make, so that started with films. And um, ideas for a TV show. I invented a format, a couple of formats that did okay. And I just like making new things. And so I now produce comedy shows, live comedy shows, which came about a bit of an accident, really. I, I studied law, didn't want to be a lawyer, wanted to tell stories, um, went into trying to make videos and films of stories. Then left a left that world because it, t- documentaries doesn't pay, and it's like a family. Common. So I took a job with the University of Law, and that was making videos to teach law. So it's like law came back after I thought I'd avoided it. Quite a easy job, and so I had lots of spare time, and so start got got an idea for a comedy show because I was going to a lot of open mic events and I saw how talented people were and then when I found out how they were well, not all of them but um, 
we'll but, get to that. We'll get yeah, to that. And, and, but I was amazed of some of the talent that was on, and then I found out that they were doing it for free and weren't getting paid. And and I didn't, you know, I really didn't know that world. And so my brain got, oh, I wonder what I can think of to do with, you know, what can we do that's different with with that? And I'm, and one day on well, one day, it was my birthday. I used to always go out for like um, comedy nights from on my birthday, and almost always I'm on stage. At some point, I get pulled out, or I just have that sort of face, I think, and I'm not shy. And I loved it, and like you know, being involved. And I wondered about a show for someone's birthday that I could organise and make them the centre of the show. So you know, specifically private events. And so came up with this quiz type game, this panel game. So best friends would be competing with each other to see who was the best mate of the birthday boy or birthday girl. With comedians, open mic comedians either side, helping and making them funny. And then I write the rounds and games and that type of did one. It was great. It, it sort of worked. And you know, I stole some of the ideas from never mind the buzzcocks and you know that type of thing. But but then when at work, there's a lot of University of Law where I was working, there were there was a judge's wig, basically. There was a judge's wig hanging around and I wondered that the quiz master might wear a wig. Mm. And then And quickly that evolved into this is your trial. And it was put in someone in the audience on trial because the quiz became a roast anyway if you you know it it was like a natural evolution and mm. and then did the first trial for a charity and it was just awesome you like mm. just did i win it seen it in written because you can't really rehearse it you can't yeah. practice it though i did prepare a lot of notes for the lawyers about the people who were going to be put in trial. That was the first version of it. And yeah, they, everyone everyone loved it. You know, the comedians really enjoyed it and blah, blah, blah. And then eventually that became, well, it was a lot of work for me. And often the funniest bits were when the comedians were improvising and just making stuff up. And when they asked questions of the defendant or their friends and, and I thought, well, this just be improvised if the comedians know what to do. And I would prepare them with legal, legalese. You know, I dress them up in gowns and give them you know, notepads and things like that, but it became, quickly, became an improvised show, and I got better, you know, the comedians got, were, were better, you know, I guess when the, when the comedians, yeah, I, it was, the, I think it was Edinburgh 2013 when, you know, the bar was, was raised, and it's been like a few hundred, three or four hundred shows since now. And and so, what, what was the impetus of bringing it to Edinburgh then? Why why here um, as opposed to just Cat? Because I assume it was running as a regular thing. At that well, point. it wasn't. It wasn't regular. It was only it was only doing them for private events. So I didn't mm. have a public show until after the first right. Edinburgh. And the idea was to sell the shows for private events for birthdays and. The sh- oh yeah, that, that was it. The the, um, it's the the very first show I did in Edinburgh was for Hearts FC, the football club. Oh. So uh, so that was at the football club. Two hundred Hearts fans, mm. and it was when they were broke, they were yeah. bankrupt. So I approached them to see if they would um, do a show or take on a show, and they would get all the proceeds. So raise some money, raise some awareness of the show for me, and persuaded the manager to do it. And Gary Locke, he was a very very kind manager to put himself forward to be put on trial so we had lots of like ex-players coming to roast him got Janie Godley Norman Lovett yeah they were the the comedians and so that was kind of my launch into Fringe which was quite a big splash in a you know for the first time I didn't Mm. know anything but I did I did a lot of research into well just you know thinking of ideas how can I make it relevant locally Mm -hmm. that was my main thing so I also put on a show with some local talent oh so I I got in touch with so one through the football club the fans hearts fan club he was a comedian and gave me some leads towards different things for the heart show so I sort of gave him a show to help run for his mates essentially so that was like a nice pay it forward mm-hmm. uh, you know there's just a lot of that that was mm. that was my first thing of fringe was just spreading myself everywhere <laughs> yeah yeah um, so yeah. It's, so it started kind of behind the scenes private parties functions uh yeah. you know cor- maybe on your corporate but that sort of thing then moved into you coming up here and doing uh sort of one-off locally 
to try and build a bit of a awareness and then a yeah. sort of run of an Edinburgh, or like a quite a short run, five shows is quite a short yeah. run of an Edinburgh fringe where they're all individual shows. Yeah. And I suppose, does that count as a stunt? I don't know whether that would have counted as a stunt according to the Edinburgh Festival or whether they would have... A cause, stunt? Yeah, because they, they count sort of things where you... So like, um, I think Daniel Sloss has like two listings in the programme. He's the only one that has that because he, I don't know how his agent does it because you're only supposed to have one oh. and it's sort of a stunt each year and then there's like people that, you know, do things on the mile and stuff. So I don't know whether okay. they counted that as a, whether that helped you promotionally or whether that was... I mean, I, I, I probably called it that myself. Okay, okay. Probably, okay. you know, oh, this is different and, you know, and I got in touch with uh, Claire, Claire Smith, Scotsman wrote something. I knew, and I knew Copstick as well. Um, I got to know her, so I got her involvement and so she'd written about it so I yeah I mean I totally did it differently so yeah that was I don't I, you know I don't know what the norm was I didn't know what was expected mm. I knew that it was a bit unorthodox anyway and yeah I mean I'm I, I, I like to experiment and try why not try this do that and but yeah I don't really do much in the way of reading the guidelines or what you're what's that you're supposed to do totally. um so did you sell out all five of those from kickstarter or from the crowdfunding um yes kind of okay the, let's talk about that because i think a lot of people would love to sell their show out before they even arrive and a lot of people are doing crowdfunding even to the point of fringe central now work with kickstarter i've got kickstarter yeah, yeah. coming on this yeah. podcast during the festival because they want to get seen by more comedians so you when what year was this let's put a date on it 13 2013 so uh, it wasn't really not many people crowdfunding at that point no. so so you went online made a crowdfunding and basically said you can buy a show for 500 pounds yep and also <clears throat> i mean i to be fair until one well, kickstarter i i made it work a key tip i would give about that is because i already knew I'd sold a show. No, not to Hearts. Hearts was a separate... That oh, wasn't sorry. That wasn't through the Kickstarter, actually. Okay, that sorry, wasn't sorry. through the Kickstarter. Uh, to the law firm, that's now right. my regular sponsor. Okay. But because that was a guarantee, I made that look... Like it, that they bought it. They paid me through the Kickstarter. So right. that was going to be a chunk that was reaching the target. Mm -hmm. and, I, and, I, and it was... Pretty much every single contribution, you know, there was lots of other contributions, uh, smaller contributions. It's friends, people I know. Okay. Know? So I did a big sort of begging campaign yeah. to yeah. to it. But you know, I gave gave quite a lot out. There's a lot of mm. admin, you know, and so oh, yeah, I probably I didn't. It w it was definitely worth doing. But fortunately, my you know my merchandise was kind of quite interesting or I think it was you know we've seen people sort of wanted it and I made a video for it which was quite unusual I sort of dressed myself up as a judge and doing a hey yeah, um bang 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 begging you know I'm a right. you don't know me blah blah um and it had a green screen with a looked like I was in a court mm -hmm. and um, so that was I don't know whether that necessarily helped but it was it was unusual I put quite mm -hmm. a bit of effort into the Kickstarter mm -hmm. page um and I was smart with what my target was to make sure it got there yeah you didn't go over the top yeah yeah, yeah. I didn't I didn't ask for too much mm. and then it and it did over sell which is great yeah yeah, yeah. um but yeah selling the in individual shows like one i sold one of the shows to happen after edinburgh okay then so there was ball bags there was inksters there was the hearts one which was separate they was tickets were sold by hearts then there was mark dolan doing a the, the one for the local open micers so that wasn't sold through kickstarter yeah, that's the. Oh God, was, that was another one, and I was just for, I totally forgot who it was. Tony was that the Tony? No, Tony Law did. He did the ball bags. Ah, <laughs> uh, I think that I'm not forgotten. It's okay. Yeah, it's twenty thirteen. Yeah. You know, yeah. Okay, so so to put this in perspective, you now come back from Edinburgh. You've done the one extra one that you you know were planning on doing. Mm -hmm. Where did you go from there? How did you continue to keep the night momentum going? What was the plan for it? In Edinburgh, 
I had so Tim Fitzhigham did a show Trevor Locke had already done one before yeah so Barry Ferns Tony Law so yeah, I think it was when Tim had done one I thought well he's you know he, he was the linchpin for being the judge you know was clearly made for him so with him and Trevor and then um, I was introduced to Tom Tuck you know my aim was to make then to, it's a, it's an improv show mm-hmm. you know it's, it's just pure improv totally, yeah. need to s- try and sell it to the general public um, based on that and so we um, what was the first first venue wasn't the f- Oh, Grand, Grand Union. It was the Grand Union, and it, and I knew I could sell it to lawyers first of all, because I, they'd quite a few of them I knew through work had been before, and that's the Grand Union was right in the heart of Law Town. Um, <laughs> so then we got that going there and, and started doing that monthly, and it was a you know it's a beautiful sort of look looking room as well, very unusual. Mm-hmm. Didn't wasn't an, an, a comedy venue. Mm-hmm. Do you think that helps? Like to set the scene a bit more? Or? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think that's a priority now for it to look and feel more than just a, a comedy night, you know, because there's, there's quite a bit of effort in mm. some ways to, and to try and justify the tickets, you know, because yeah. like the ticket prices and, you know, they then the quality of talent, because I'm keeping the the performers for the whole hour or more. So, yes, that's that made a big difference. We I did then oh, quite soon after went to the Hornsey Town Hall, which spectacular looking, mm. you know, and that was and it was also near near where I live. And and so, yeah, I knew the people uh, managing that place and did some there and got some you know great photography happening and so yeah the look was always important and that was always impressive to two bigger name comedians you know mm-hmm. so I got Al Murray came to do one pretty soon after that first Edinburgh at the Grand Union yeah so my, so my question there would be it feel I mean it might be both so I got you on that but it feels like the theming of the show so a bit of ostentatious you know when when you hear improv show if it's just an improv show, there's loads of those. Yeah. And so it's a bit, uh, I don't want to say generic, because that's, that's putting down a lot of people, and I don't mean it like yeah. that. But it, but, but it needs something more to it that, that means people can look forward to it and means people can... Uh, Understand a, it. Yeah, and have, a, and have a reason to book. Like, not just, oh, we're going to an improv show. With, like, with a comedy show, you might go, oh, we're just going to a comedy show. But I think with improv, because it's so unplanned and so in the moment and you and you need to have the chops to do that i think there needs to be maybe not needs to be but it helps to have something so i'm wondering whether someone like al murray who is a big name in in comedy terms whether that helps sell tickets or whether that helped push that your your night further or whether it still was the theme of the night and and the vibe of the night that helped get people in the door the, he's not he's not known for improv do you know no, what I mean? so, well i say i didn't I mean, that was a real coup to have him do a show really early on. And it was because he, we have a, a it was a mutual friend who, who, in fact, he was the very first guy who was the judge for me, who he's not a comedian anymore, but he was friend, he's friends with Al and was, had mentioned it to him. You know, I've been doing this show. That's, you know, it's great fun. And, um, and I'll had told him how that sounds great you know can I have a go you know mm. kind of, I'll kind of literally asked how he could have a go and mm. I'm like so I never really thought about him before then and so mm. I got got in touch with Alan and said would, would you fancy having a go and N- not even thought with oh can he do it mm. I just assumed he could yeah he just I just felt that of course he can yeah. so, but um and, and his personality and persona on stage persona I feel would suit it quite well in general. Yeah. Well, it was a, it was a question. He wasn't sure whether to be pub landlord or not. Um, that was a discussion that mm. we had, and I, I said yes, be pub landlord. It'll be, mm. it'll be easier for you. You yeah. know, just because I think the roles are character roles anyway. People, the commu- you know, acts come and do it, and they adopt and they create. 
whether what type of lawyer that they're going to be. So I think it's that was a useful direction. Um, I think you know if there was like a a lot ongoing thing for Al doing it, he might become a different type of lawyer. Maybe mm. I don't know, but yeah, it was it just wore it like a glove. <laughs> yeah. So so the theme of an improv show based on courtroom trial was easy it was useful for me to explain to comedians mm. more as you know to get the the name comedians the audiences i found don't know comedians no, you know they don't even they really don't there's, there's comedy audiences mm-hmm. who do know com- comedians obviously yeah. but the majority of people looking for a funny night out it's it's not the names and you know i've had some an embarrassment of of riches with famous people in my mind and um, mm. doing my show and then I'm going around talking to people trying to say oh you know come to this such and such is in it and they don't know but they, it is actually the concept that is the easier sell and they get that straight away you know put your mates on trial mm. you know oh that's yeah that'd be amazing and they come up with all you know they tell yeah. you what they're like I hate him because of this or yeah, I hate they all of... they get some started straight away so it's not the names that has ever sold the shows really but they it's the quality of the performer who can do it mm. you know they have to it's not um I've, I've seen you know pe- some people do struggle with it but that's you know that's the fun i have to <laughs> do the castings it's, it's, yeah. it's um, my favorite thing yeah i mean there's always i mean yeah there's a lot of shit lawyers out there so why would there not be yeah. a, 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 <laughs> do you know what i mean like there's, there's bound to be a comedian who's not very good at um okay so and then we we met up J- june july time i think it was in london and you were talking to me about social media and how that could potentially impact your your branding and your reach for the idea because you as I recall, you wanted to get more corporate bookings potentially, and and become more. He's nodding, by the way, and forgotten that yes. it's an audio podcast. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm nodding a lot. Yes, yeah. and I don't want to overlap you, or, no, but fine. yes, yes. I'm trying to do the same as well. <laughs> and 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 we were discussing how you would get in with more corporate gigs, but also where the night could potentially go mm-hmm. on the internet as as a as a thing and as a concept that people could buy into that would maybe make them tell people about or come down yeah. to to see is that is that still what you want after? oh yes yes um i mean i've adopted well i had you know twitter accounts and facebook and i'm i'm got instagram now as well i've been using social media from the start and i guess certainly with the initial things with kickstarter requires it and but i've never my it's not been much of a strategy and at different points of time people said oh you shouldn't be you, you should just be using that twitter account for only show related things or do and i'm you know and i just i spout what i think as well <laughs> and um and i'm not very strategic with the business of it all it's happened and you know most of the corporate bookings have come through people who have been to the shows and or told their friends so it's been quite organic but not me going out and finding them and and I think there's some tricks that I might have missed for getting to different relying on comedy audiences you know who are more discerning in in many ways I know that the show can be it's loved by people who don't know comedy mm-hmm. you know, it's loved by it's like they've never seen anything <clears throat> like that before and there's more of them mm-hmm. how do I get to yeah. them uh, you know and there's different things that I've tried I mean I'm, you know creating a family show was one direction to open up markets uh, have you seen the um so I don't interrupt you have you seen Comedy Club for Kids have just launched a podcast for example yes yes yeah. yes, yes I found that a really interesting yeah. one as well because yeah. I don't think there are many podcast comedy podcasts aimed at kids at the moment no really no and I, I'd be interested I mean I think I think they are I mean I'm, I'm friends with them and they yeah, you know yeah. they're great Isabel's a, Isabel's a awesome. force yeah, yeah. and um, I'd be paying attention to that for sure and yes and that been one thing I've always, I've always recorded shows Record, you know look, I've got so much recording of shows video and audio and yeah that's my my other profession yeah but and I've them put stuff on my website I've tried all sorts of different things but it's when we were talking the idea of shorter podcasts maybe individual cases rather than doing promo videos mm-hmm. you know actually this is a this is another piece of entertainment another mm-hmm. piece of content that can be heard by more people and then that mm. further markets and sells the other products you know life yeah. but i'm i'm i've got adhd so i'm a bit scattered and i'm so like, oh what about this shiny new thing and then i move on to another thing and then i <laughs> oh, buy some google ads and i'll go and do so i've realized 
speak, not came to speak to you to go and spread the load a bit of you know focus a bit mm-hmm. on what because I've spent so much time on things that were fun but where's the pay <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know exactly I mean don't get me wrong there's value in doing stuff for fun and experimenting yeah. but at the end of the day if the if the room's empty <laughs> yeah. you know you don't get to eat <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I, I do I just end up spinning a lot of plates and so thinking business wise I got on to a, an entr- entrepreneur program and that was great because it was a different sort of mindset to hearing and with other other people with their startup businesses and this was mainly a scheme for tech companies so that was inspiring actually this is how other people approach their innovation and ideas so I learned quite a bit from that yeah thinking of how to who is who is my customer it's not this is a this was a big change my customers for corporates are not the audience no they're not the audience and that was no. what I, yeah, you yeah. know, because that's why I'm so used to thinking totally. about the team. And it's actually, it's just one person in the office who, yeah, yeah, yeah. who makes the booking, who's got the yeah, job yeah. for booking the Christmas party. Yeah, yeah. You, I just need to work out how to sell to, and it's usually her. But, yeah, you know, yeah. what's the what's that approach? And who are those businesses that are more open to something that's a bit different, more participatory? Mm. Yeah, and I, you know, and I did I did quite a few other corporate type event jobs. Uh, you know, I always end up volunteering or get involved with shows and seeing how other people mm-hmm. do it and so I was working the <laughs> producing the African comedy show up in Golders Green mm-hmm. for, for a bit which was an, a real eye opener for an entirely different audience mm-hmm. you know there's no booze sold at all mm-hmm. it was in a church and you know so yeah. make, it really made you made me think of the other the angles yeah, and yeah. how so that was a bit of, that wasn't anything to do with corporates but it, what, <laughs> it really was it was about it sponsorship yeah, the sponsorship you know so I know I'm quite good at keeping other revenue streams in mind and thinking that there's yeah can get mm. sponsorship as well and how it can mm. provide entertainment for an event that something else is happening you know how supplementary mm. it can be as a service to things so completely I mean yeah uh, when, when we spoke last I remember you know, I don't know if you would have heard it because it's only been out two days so I wouldn't blame you especially as these last two days I figured I'd put it out now because everyone's traveling up and that meant they might have some time to listen to it on the train um, but uh, I've just put out an, uh, an episode with Jacob from HD management and he was talking about so when we were talking we were saying to to get those mm-hmm. mainly the HR person who, yeah. who does yeah. the booking for the corporate for the Christmas party mainly in the room how do you get them in the room and yep. convince them it's and also get maybe even just get on their radar because they might have sorted out their Christmas party a mm-hmm. lot of them sort out now you know at August September time so they might you know they might just be thinking about it for next year and um, he said that for his showcase shows for his act so I think he's got about eight now okay. he puts all eight on and they all do sort of 10 to 12 minutes and he only puts 20 tickets on sales to the public in a room that holds about 80 okay. and then he invites 60 industry people and the, and maybe 30 will turn up which in, or industry which industry? whatever he's trying to push so right. if he's trying to push TV he'll invite right. 60 TV people if he's trying to push radio he'll push you know whatever yeah. it, whatever it is okay yeah. in this instance but he was, always but always some yeah with friend. a target with a target in mind and it's so that they're not the only ones in the room because obviously a lot of them will know each other and so you kind yeah. of don't want them all sitting next to each other yeah. but also um, you want the front row to be actually people who like comedy yeah. and want to discover new comedy and so he was telling uh, on the pod uh, he was saying I put out tickets and I and I make sure that the back rows are you know they're reserved so like they're for the industry so the laughs are at the front mm-hmm. people at the back can sit and judge and with their notepads if they want and whatever they're doing and I think it's the same kind of thing and uh, it, it reminded me of what we were talking about where I think you know same thing you'll need people in the room that actually want to watch the show because you definitely don't want it to just be a room of HR people sure um, and you're but you want... I need them to be involved exactly so which is quite a you know um, I mean, I'm yeah. It's I mean, it's a different proposition because of the I I don't know. Trying you know, getting a, a bunch of different HR people together in a room. I mean, the, I think the best thing for me. Sorry, I'm thinking about this. Yeah, because um, my show is improvised and it requires audience participation, and also from experience when it's sprung upon an audience and they don't know it's going to happen mm. or how it's going to happen, it can, you know, it doesn't work mm. and it's more of a challenge than it needs to be. So showcasing it as a as a 
live experience is I don't think it's I can't see how to make that work for the corporate market trying to get corp I mean I've got recordings so I you know in a way I mean I know that being there when it's live and but people do they can see it they can mm. see oh I imagine when you know accounts department sitting over there and that's where marketing mm. will be and you know they all they hate each other and mm-hmm. you know they they already fill in the gaps so once you they get the premise and mm. once they can see how it works and how yeah. it's funny i think recreating it i, I mean I, I don't know i i i would try anything to get more hr people mm-hmm. i think there's this is the other thing i've been doing so many of these other like monthly shows with the hope that people will turn up to think about mm-hmm. i mean just we just do them anyway because they're fun <laughs> but as an advert and get the right mm-hmm. people to go back to their office and i you know i always talk to people and say oh you know we do this for work events you know while they're there but i think my strategy really is to go directly to those people mm. and have conversations well, too, I was, I was actually thinking about as well is ha- having, because I, I intermittently work in offices to write jokes for people, essentially. Mm. And often the social media team find a meme or find a video and send it around the office. Right. They'll sort of, you know, oh, yes. this is a, this is a, you know, a little clip. Hey, everyone, two minutes off your work, you know, check out this dog video for today, or whatever it yeah. would be and yeah. stuff. And I was thinking, I don't know how you would do this because I think it would be a harder sell for someone to bitch to be that video going around yeah but i figured if you know people in an office or you or you have friends who still do office work you could even say to them hey i've just uploaded a load of these sort of trials here's like three or four i don't know whether they'd be of interest to you or i thought or maybe even like if there's like one specific to the work that office does you go hey i saw this one i thought your office would get a kick out of it send it off to them because then that way it doesn't necessarily have to go direct to the hiring person it can go around that way and at the end all you need is sort of a card that just says book your own you know event sort of thing and that way it, it, it's more subtle yeah I, yeah I, can i hire you will you come and do a job <laughs> yeah absolutely i think that's, a, that, that's that what i thought you were doing when we were in london <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, be, um, i think you're right i think i previously i've got all sorts of short videos that are generic little clips that but just to show which acts are doing it and that type of thing but because that's yeah. specifically for corporates. You obviously wouldn't do that for an Edinburgh show. You know, they don't need to... Well, you know. I, yeah, I, but I think it's... Um, yeah, getting the weather with hashtag in and, you know, the, oh, the biscuit trial. And, you know, and if that's the, <laughs> if that's topical, there's something, in, you know, there's... God, there's, there's, there's a Trump trial that I've got recorded. Yeah. There's a Brexit trial. There's a mm. patriarchy trial. Yeah, there's, yes, there's yeah, yeah. themes like that, which I'm sure could hit a rich scene mm. of um, attention. So, yeah, totally. I think that's... I think that is a good way of using the office dynamics, social too. media, and yeah. you know, and how it shares, how you get the the thing shared. I mean, I, it's one of the great things about <laughs> this job. Job, just there's no written rules about it, and um, and if you've got something that is funny, there's there's no um, that. It, it's not shameful to go and no. try and punt it around either. Oh, no. you know, it's, it's actually. I think we all feel a bit, you know, so if, maybe, if we're yeah. self, even now, like I'm, you know, if I do a tweet about you know, my show, I feel really sort of like all self promotory, and it's like they're following me for a reason. Yeah, do you know? I, I don't know. I, it's funny. Comedians are strangely, from from my experience, quite precious about things like that, mm. and you know, and bec- maybe because I'm not on stage maybe because I've not got that skin in the game, I'm quite shameless. And, you know, so I probably have been annoying um, and repetitive at times, but sorry, you know, yeah, just, yeah. T- just turn me off or whatever yeah. if it's so... Because I think, I, and I don't remember whether I text you this or not, so forgive me if I've repeated myself, but I remember saying, uh, I remember thinking, so I'm reading my notes of <laughs> of uh, ideas, because this is a different one for me. Normally I, I, you know, write a load of questions and I'm doing a, a ton of sort of background of how you got into the bit, all that sort of stuff, whereas this one's more general as a chat about social media and about how it can impact uh, a, a themed thing like this, because there's a lot of that out there, there's a lot of, you know, sort of, you know, uh, there's the pun run or there's, um, you know, they just sort of do, they, yep. they regularly tweet you know sort of puns or they retweet the yeah oh well Beck Hill like I think Beck's is amazing. the she's yeah. the best I mean yeah. she's her, she, her creativity with oh, yeah with um, ideas to hook her followers yeah, into yeah. a game or a, a oh, thing. God. I've been watching it as a run up to Edinburgh, and, I, and every day I'm like, "Oh God, you thought of another one." Yeah, this is an, it's it drives me insane because the amount of times I'm follow Beck Hill on Twitter, I'll put a link to her in the thing. But every time I watch her, I'm just like, "You must have spent." I mean, I don't know if it just organically comes to her or whether she just knows get, how she does it because she's just so creative on there. I think when you get started with um, doing, you know, 
trying something different, get a response. And she's got a, such a following now anyway that expects mm. it. It's... And it's, and it's obviously part of her show is using, you know, multimedia anyway and music and, and you know, flip charts and pictures. And, and so it's perfect for those, for using social media, for adding content smart ways. And, you know, and I've, mm. I, you know, I've, I think I've had a few little mm. successes that have come by support. You know, you try, try different things, you know, asking a question um, to see if you can get a, a response to yeah. something and it might not be directly to do with the, the show. You yeah, know, yeah, it's, yeah. and that's, um, yeah, we, I did, um, we, did a, we did a show in uh, Le- for the Leicester Comedy Festival, first time going there. And, you know, it was going to be a trial. It was going to be the same sort of mm. thing. But I, I, I studied in Leicester. So I had some sort of awareness of the town, but it was at that particular time, just before the, the festival, they'd found um, the bones of King Richards mm-hmm. in, the, in a car park. So that you know, I jumped on that mm-hmm. and made the show uh, the trial of the King Richard the Third trial, <laughs> yeah. putting the whole of the city of Leicester on trial to see whether they deserved to keep the into the bones and mm. um, and that was that worked really well, you know. And then it gave me me a hook. Get the, I got the mayor to go. Um, I got the archaeologist who found them, mm. and then I got but I got also got some responses from the house of york or fans of the house of york Mm. that were um offended by things i was saying making fun of it Mm. which was you know so i was doing a number of tweets and Mm. facebook posts and yeah got some quite angry messages back Mm. and tried to uh, well tried to apologize but just explain it's a comedy show yeah that's great you know so tapping into something that's obvious i mean it's something topical that's mm. local something that's um where you can I, i'm fortunate with this show that it's often possible to do that to have a, mm. a theme and, and and a repeat thing with with your thing that can be quite easily in- incorporated is is keeping it local and is yeah. aiming for something local whereas for example the pun run might be harder i mean maybe you could pun the name of the city or for example there's uh the, the, there's um well, i'm trying to think of ones in london now my brain's come back but there's there's a lot of uh those oh what's the oh there's the uh the distraction club or there's um or we've covered yep. um uh what's the name oh god see now i feel like i need to remember them so we've done ostentatious we've done oh there's shoot, shoot from the hip the show oh, show stops there's there's all sorts of um ones that are harder to make local yes and I mean yes. you, they can sort of maybe do something about it but I think with yours you could you know do the trial of like you said the king that you could I, I was the thing I was going to suggest or the thing that I was thinking about was on Twitter there's a lot of arguments that happen where it's like should yeah. this person be you know uh, hung for the thing that they not hung but you know like social media be hung for the the thing that they've been accused of yeah. even without due process at the moment you know yeah. like there's 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 rumors of this person doing this and i was thinking maybe not all of them obviously but there are some of those that you could easily do hey we're going to do a poll you know what yeah. do you actually think you know yes no and then reply if you've got more information and have just a kind of back and forth or you could even do like a like a video with you and two comedians before a show on the day of the mm-hmm. the thing where it's like oh we've got these you know 69% say this 39% say this we're going to quickly do a one minute argument between these two and see what they think uh, and yeah, I, absolutely I, mean, I, I remember um, uh, Mark Steele's tour when I was thinking about taking trial on tour mm. going to towns like he has and like we did with Leicester but you know there's always a local issue you mm. know there's one local issue you just need yeah. to find the more sort of mundane and regional and local mm. it is the better but it's controversial yeah, yeah. whether that car park should be turned into a Tesco's or a yeah, yeah. sports centre or that's a boring one but you know there might <laughs> be you know whether it's a scone or a scone or whether it's a you know what yeah, the yeah. local food and habits are yeah. but um, I was in Harrogate recently and I'd bumped into uh, Eleanor Conway but, um, and so we went I went to see her show in Harrogate and she's not from there and um, my, my dad lives there and it was really interesting she's I mean she's great she's so hard working and where she, mm. you know and I, I was you know to bump into her and to it was really nice and I actually saw her doing her job out of town if you see yeah, what I mean yeah. and, um, and she has she had this um, just part of her set I mean this is probably stand, standard for a lot of 
you know, comedians, I think, when you go to her and find something local to comment on. But mm-hmm. she had the, this uh, joke in her set, which is insult, uh, insulting some group of girls from Dundee. And she, she would use from Dundee and say, don't, don't, why do you use Dundee in Harrogate? You know, always find the local mm-hmm. yeah. scabby area. Because if you just turn up at the station and just ask anyone, where mm. where's, where is the local place that you would make fun of? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, actually, I probably shouldn't talk about Eleanor on in that context anyway but I'll, I'll message but, her before it goes out if you want I'm, I know her quite well she was doing Walk yeah. of Shame too. is that the show she was doing she, she's uh, found on Tinder you yeah. might know oh, her from one. Tinder or something okay I'll, I'll give her a message and make sure she's okay with it before it goes out it's fine the, I've got a joke in the sh- show where the punchline is the baby would vote remain and I did it in a city which was massive leave vote and I just changed it yeah. because I thought you know what in the nice way possible I don't think it's going to work with the, the idea yeah. is the baby would do the worst thing to possible do the, yes do the opposite too. so it has to be what they would want kind of thing so I don't have to agree with it at all because mm. it, the, the irony is in the other two bits as well because it's like a rule of three thing that's just the end one mm-hmm. because that's the most divine and I know what you mean it, it only takes a minute of Google searches for me to find out did they vote leave did they vote remain I'll just switch it and put a little note on my hand and go remember this time you're voting leave or this time you're voting yeah. remain and it doesn't um, even and it doesn't even need I, I, I'm, I'm second guessing but the, you know the, if it's just the baby did something it shouldn't have done as mm. well or doesn't that it was disagreeable or you can I think quite often we are we are lured into the 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 one that you think oh well everyone knows this thing mm. and has opinion about this thing but if you're going regionally everyone regionally mm-hmm. in that area has an opinion about a particular thing exactly and actually with the more personal you can make it and this yeah. is very much the the my original thoughts about this is your trial and the shows that I you know, want to do is really making it, the audience feel it's about them. Yeah, you know, and that's fundamentally it and so those details are so important I mm-hmm. find and so when we, I've got one of the shows this year Edinburgh is there's a birthday that mm. they've already bought 50 tickets which wow. is great so there's going to be a very definite experience yes for them. of course and so I make some extra effort mm-hmm. to find out about that group and put it into the yeah, to the course. comedians and um, you know and I've done these for the private shows and doing a qu- you know a questionnaire for people who might be put on trial and mm. it's the the effect of having those tiny nuanced idiosyncratic mm-hmm details Mm -hmm. you know um that that's what makes it that's what really um gets everybody on board and makes it feel special so it's always worth yeah finding the most strange thing only unsuspecting thing to be revealed is Mm -hmm. um yeah very much worth it completely completely i mean it's it's it was a real learning curve i did a gig with brendan burns last year i went on and i did okay I did not storm it. I did not do very well. And I came off and he, he pulled me to one side and just went, you didn't make it enough about them. Mm. And I went, what do you mean? He went, they, they just want to hear about their life for the first five minutes and then they'll like you. And I went, what, how do you know that? And he went, you and the first two other acts, because we were, you know, it was before the break, none of you acknowledged where you were or, or talked about them. The MC did. Mm-hmm. And you could see it. They loved the MC. And, and he went on and he, I think it was, Matt, he was, no, it was the, the, the fat duck in, um, or the pe- 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 penguin comedy it's the one in Birmingham um, Jay uh, Hadley runs uh, oh is Jay Hadley Cook James Cook no, no James Hadley no. Okay. he, he, he lives uh, in London he right. goes like once a month for it it's, I think it's Birmingham but anyway um he and and he did, and he and Brendan went on and did sort of ten minutes of stuff about Birmingham. Um, he ripped a bit on like you know the local yep. you know problem or whatever, and then stormed the shit out of it. And um, look, Brendan's great. I'm not saying he wouldn't have stormed the shit out anyway, of it anyway. Yes. But he, I, I remember I remember talking to him afterwards, and he and and he, he didn't do it in an arrogant. You know, he wasn't like you know, he he was just like they. It, it taught me to watch the MC more. Yeah. Because often I'm watching the other acts more, thinking they're going to compare me to those, and they're going to often think I. You know, like if uh, so, sometimes I watch another act and they'll do a joke that's similar to mine. I go, okay, I might have to drop that then because I didn't like that one. But it's more the MC because the MC are actually sort of taking time to talk to the yep. the audience, and so you can see from that. And now I do it well, actively where I'm like, okay, I can see they're kind of you know they want to be talked to a bit, but they don't really want to be engaging. They sort of you they, they want you to feel like you're not just talking at them and whatever it is. And it was a real learning curve for me that one where where. Up until that point, I think, especially as I start to do more and more sort of independent clubs and things, you realise they have a repeat audience there that really care about That's coming right. to that room. And with yours, you know, as a 50, 50 people coming for a birthday party, you know, I don't know 50 people, you know, I don't have yeah. 50 friends. So that person's obviously quite popular or 
quite unpopular. It's a big birthday. It's a special yeah. birthday, but yes. I was going to say, all quite yeah. unpopular if they want to just roast him on his, you know. Yeah. But, but the point is, is that, that, that that's, a, that's a moment that you can create for that person's life and that they might, you know, they're, mm. they're going to remember that. So it's quite important that you make it about them. And, and well, always them. with, with <clears> the trials, always make sure that, I mean, you know, people who, the, the acts that do it and have done it lots they know to get straight into the audience find out you know certainly speak to the accusers speak mm-hmm. to pe- get everybody as involved as possible mm-hmm. you know get witnesses that have nothing to do with the mm-hmm. the crime you know always i'm always telling acts to do that you know always mm-hmm. direct your questions at other people ask mm-hmm. for their opinion mm-hmm. and you know the more that they're involved they you know you, you get them if you if you go out with your argument and just spout that for a bit mm-hmm. they're not going to be as interested um, yeah and and in terms of social media the the thing that i find really interesting is uh, and it's the reason why i've sort of shied away from it a little bit at the moment i kind of keep keep to my own which i shouldn't do cuz echo chain all that sort mm-hmm. of stuff but it people are just so immediate i've got my opinion like yeah. they're just like I've oh I've read the headline I don't even read the thing I've just read the headline I know what I feel about that vague area of society and and I felt like there's something you can do or, or I, I haven't quite you know this is us spitballing yeah. now because I haven't worked it out properly but all I've written down in my notes is there's got to be something and, and maybe this is an audio thing because I feel like with podcasts you sit there and you listen to them in your in your in, your in between times or you listen to them when you don't want silence but you don't want to talk to someone yeah so there's got to be something in maybe getting like I said, an actual debate, an actual thing that's there and getting them to talk about it. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I do, I do get involved with, um, with, that, with actual law as well that I find mm. interesting. And, you know, and I do, um, I'm, I'm opinionated myself. And mm. so I, um, I want to encourage that reaction myself. Um, but yes, it's certainly the, the format of the show lends itself to that i think yeah with recording you can because you can record audio just on your phone quite simply and quickly mm-hmm. and then just share and put that out mm-hmm. you know and there's um as you put out it's hell to edit <laughs> well <laughs> no, your phone. It, yeah. yeah but i'm just i'm just thinking of the more the you know I thought i'm walking around edinburgh this mm-hmm. this this month and you know and i see if i've got a the format i don't know what it is yet it's a, maybe it's just a question this is trevor lock what you know, and he puts out this challenge, this question, you know, what do you reckon to the, oh God, I'm going down some sort of serious legal argument, mm-hmm. but you know, should, um, should, the, should we ban, oh, God. oh electric scooters. Um, I don't say that, I've just bought one. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I say I bought yeah. one, I pay the deposit, whatever, it's, I don't have the money for it. I want one, I want there's so many of I those want great, yeah. yeah. Um, I've seen the one I want. Yeah, I, 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 I gave in because I was like, it's taking me. I, if I can get, basically, I want to get home as quickly as possible because there's like a there's a treadmill in my building, and I and I want I like running on a treadmill. So my logic is, if I use the the scooter to get home quicker instead of walking, I'll run more, which is stupid logic. Yes, but I feel it holds up in if I actually do it. Yes, I probably won't. I probably yes. will just get fatter and hate myself because I don't want to get fat again. I, I, mean, I think we, is, is, it, is it Wally when we, you know, they're in, in the future on the spaceship and then everyone's just big blobs being pushed around and motor, motorized around. Oh, that is, and I it's, and you know, when I see all these different electric devices, and I think they're incredible now. The, you know, the yeah, yeah. Um, skateboards and uh, segways, and um, I saw one that looked like a bike that was but it had no pedals it just um oh. and it was i've not seen that style before mm. and he just yeah i think it might have folded away or something yeah well i think that i think there's something in you know i can get access to lots of different mm. funny people mm. have a question maybe it's just me asking them a question and mm. getting their opinion on a thing mm-hmm. that can be tied into a hashtag legal questions or mm-hmm. you know about the law or something um and then that be provocative and because it w- just make it making something divisive mm. making yeah it's not obvious why there's so many things now people want to take a sides mm-hmm. and of course almost every debate and every trial that we mm-hmm. do well, the, every trial that happens and everyone that's accused of something in the comedy show, mm-hmm. they've always done it. Yeah, they've always yeah, yeah. done it. But 
is that a crime? Is that yeah, yeah. was there a defence for that? And that's mm -hmm. the creative bit to yeah, make yeah, yeah. it for the comedians to make it a twist on that. Ah, Completely. but did you think about that? So having those single mm -hmm. questions put out, mm -hmm. I think that's a that's a great thing. I think I'll just walk around with one of the wigs and um, <laughs> stick it on people. And can you know? Can you make a case for this? And then yeah, less than is there is there a limit audio clips that i know it's minutes on instagram for video is it uh there's a recommended a maximum, yeah there's a maximum on instagram and there's a maximum on twitter but on podcasts you can make it any length you want you know you can put it you can put it a second if you really want. yeah but that's what I it doesn't need yeah. to be a podcast though oh no no i'm saying i'm saying if you yeah. wanted to make it a, a twitter i think it's two minutes something i can look it up for you yeah. um but they've got a two minute limit and, and, and instagram have instagram have a one minute limit for a little video but then they have a thing called instagram tv which is up to an hour so right. you can put out but the problem is is that it's like it's the horizontal screen thing so, you, yeah. so you'd have to like hold you'd have to record it slightly differently and the way you, the recordings you've sent me are all kind of like uh, landscape rather yeah. than uh, either square which is what Instagram would come out as right. oh yes, yes so it would either yes, crop yes. or it would look or it would come out so on a screen you I've would have it landscape it. In a, in, but it because it doesn't rotate yeah yeah, yeah that's why that's the uh, yeah I hate um, I'm always telling people to go landscape and actually now with Instagram it, yeah. you'll record well, when Stuart, so, Gold, Stuart Goldsmith did every uh, a pilot of Everyone's a Comedian in the uh, in Edinburgh in the um, what's the nightclub called Opium Nightclub mm -hmm. on the thing, and I and he he asked me to to live stream it for people to get involved, and you know I was helping him right. back and forth. So I recorded it on on a phone like uh, that way because he knew that it would probably be needed. It's such bad <laughs> quality because a your phone doesn't work very well in low light, and yeah. b you you. you you've got to sort of leave it there anyway. So you can't really get involved even though yeah. people are jumping in and out because if you move it, you lose the feed. And so you have to get like the right, you have to yeah. get the right, I don't know. And often they don't need the video and the video doesn't, in that case, it doesn't, it doesn't, add, doesn't it, add anything. No. So sometimes, you he know. just wanted a video. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. 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 Let's, I, yeah, I'm going to, I think I am going to experiment on ideas, I think, this this year. In, mm. in this, I mean, I'm, this August, so always experiment with yeah, something, yeah, yeah. but um, um, but short, short and lots is, mm. I think, a way to go. And you, you know, something will appeal to somebody, and yeah. you know, and how it might just start a thing. And also, the shorter, the less effort it mm -hmm. That's is. Investment, so, yeah. um, yeah, well, watch this space, we'll see <laughs> what crap we can come up with. This is so much fun to edit. I'm really enjoying hearing back David's thoughts on what social media does and doesn't work for his nights in terms of promotion online and what he's tried and what he's failed at, as well as his thoughts on crowdfunding. It was really exciting given I've got Kickstarter coming on the podcast in a few weeks time to talk about crowdfunding for comedians for their project. Go to the Facebook group and throw me your questions for them now because I'll be doing that shortly. So I'd really appreciate any exciting questions you've got for Kickstarter. While you write your questions, why not listen to this podcast episode episodes advert here it comes and we're back what a great product and or service i'm very grateful for their ad money it's probably about a penny if i'm honest with you but it's still there as i've mentioned at the start of the podcast my book how to make a living by working for free is on sale on my website and amazon i prefer you to buy it from my website because amazon take months to pay me and it's such a small amount of money that it's almost ha hardly worth me chasing if you'd like to buy a copy of it feel free to check out the link in the show notes if you'd like me to do any social media consultancy work for your club or social media copywriting uh, either comedy or otherwise please do drop me an email right now let's jump back into the podcast with David Allison. It's not even easy. I think it's just that's that's how it is because mm. bit, I think comedians are more open-minded than most. And mm. I think, and this is my opinion on whichever side, I think the right wing side is definitely more assertive and confirmed and decided of what they think. Mm. I think the nature of being a comedian is exploratory is and and this is i tapped into you know i wouldn't set off i'm not a comedian i didn't set off to be one but I, you know law and argument and being seeing the other side of mm. the story and that being a devil's advocate i think that's um i think that's far more a left leaning way of course the extreme left are so fixated in not in, in their way of thinking as well but 
it's there's a lot more um there's a lot more options to be left and i mean kind i think yeah, 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 i think yeah, yeah. kind is where to be mean <laughs> and selfish is yeah. just is singular but i think that's such a stereotype of the is. two sides because i i mean i don't know if you just saw jeff norcock he did a um uh, a tv show on bbc called how the middle class ruined britain right? right and i watched it on the way up here and i and i and i i, I was going to go into it thinking because immediately the title made me go i'm not going to like this right mm -hmm. and i thought no i'm going to do what I, I, know, I, I try and do at least is go into it and go i haven't made my decision I, I've sort of made a decision before watching it, but I want, I want to kind of go into it with an open mind. And I loved it. And, it, and he's, hmm. he's, he's openly right-wing, he's openly conservative, he's openly um, a lot of the opposite to what I believe, but he made some very valid points that I agree with. Yeah. And, and so I get... And, and but he's, he's a comedian but he's and very, he's open. But, but he's very caring. He, yeah, he, he yeah. genuinely very... You know, like one of the things he said was about how he keeps saying how... Uh, you know, it was better in the old days where he, you know, he was talking about his council state upbringing and how he loved that. But he's like, I don't want this for my kids. As much as I say it's great and it was mm. better, I don't want this for my kids. And it's like, I think there's a lot of that. I think there's a lot of, you know, he, in his conservative heart, he wants, you know, to have his money and, you know, keep his money and stuff. And yeah. And so it's interesting because his caring comes out in a different way. Comedians are more vocal and opinionated than anyone else anyway and actually <laughs> for better or for worse so for you know left or right or whatever it they are not the majority of people don't give a shit about anything classes or whatever he what he might be talking about i think is they don't have an opinion you know they don't it's it's very localized and it's about themselves that's the more default way of thinking is conservative and mm. look after your own look after your family mm -hmm. to think about beyond your mm. own and your family and everybody just it's impossible to actually equate them or have a, a mm -hmm. same standard or level of you know this oh mm. how far left and how far like, mm. it's non measure it's not measurable because no. there's it's just more specific I think on the right about very exact things mm -hmm. and I think it's like left, left and right side of the brain isn't it mm. with the you know the more feeling side of the brain and the more rational, rational side yeah. of the brain they're different it way around isn't it as well I think the left side is actually the, the, heart, the heartless side the rational, rational side. yeah yeah heartless um, <laughs> um, well that brings me on nicely into talking to you about because you said that you some people say oh you should only post about the, the gigs on there mm. and and personally I whenever I'm talking to someone about their social media I don't think that's a good idea I, I think you should you should your personality and and you should be part of that feed because ultimately they're although they're buying into the show they're also buying into a brand of you and and I mean I was doing some stuff with um I was talking to Lee uh, Moore from Tales of Whatever he runs a he runs a story a, a storytelling spoken word like that sort of thing in, in um, the Midlands and um, and he was saying you know how can we you know what, what what kind of stuff can we do that lets our personality out and stuff and I and I said to him I, I often on trains I'm often on my own on trains I've got a running joke with my my followers where I take a photo of me on my own on a train and I go I'm the most attractive person on this train and it's just it's a silly joke it's probably no one's laughing at it at this point because I've done it a million times but it gets loads of responses from people because they're like Oh, he's done it again. Like, he, you know, he's on a train on his own. Um, and I, I know, you know, I always tag the place I'm going, so it's kind of a bit of an advert and stuff. And they're, and they're looking into how they can, you know, because they're constantly moving that show around the festivals and things, and they're going to, you know, take photos of where am I now? I saw, that was another thing, I saw Phil Nickel doing that recently on Twitter. He was taking photos of somewhere where he was and going, guess where I am? Okay. Guess where I'm on tour? Yeah. Kind of thing. And I really like that idea because it kind of gets them involved and they're like, Oh, I wonder if I can and it makes you look out for it as well it's like oh I wonder where I can I wonder where he is today you know yeah I think there's I mean I see that with the different acts who have their um, it's not gimmick but they're, they're yeah that what they're known for and um, and what they're interested in I think it's absolutely important to um, not just be a series of it's social media so it's supposed mm. to be the the original intent of it is for interaction the ability to interact whether how how other people use it and or use use social media whether they're looking for entertainment or looking for information about whatever you're doing you can't second guess you don't need to try mm -hmm. and you're not doing it for them no. in, as well you know i think you use it for your own fun i mean i'm not the one that people are buying tickets for and they're buying for my shows it's but i actually am the um i'm always there and i'm always um part of the the conversation mm. and um 
and so yeah i i am going to not hide myself um <laughs> behind my social media i can't i, I can't i don't like repetition i can't repeat mm. something so you know and when I know people can set up these re repeat mm. posted things at certain times with the information about that. I wish I was organized to do that in many ways, but I would just be bored of it myself. And, yeah. um, and I think there's, I think depending on what you're, I, I mean, I was listening to, um, I think people can get fixated about the, results and think that mm -hmm. oh that number of likes or that retweets means something and how many mm -hmm. followers and um if that's they don't turn they don't actually that, that's not selling a ticket or mm -hmm. you know the that's you can get l lots of response just by being being a dick being you know having <laughs> yeah. some you know think of the uh katie hopkins and all of you know you can mm -hmm. get responses mm -hmm. If you want to deal with them or mm. yeah use it as a playground just to yeah. you know try things practice things and um well, that's what i i do and um i do sometimes get confused because i've got a number of of accounts and then I, oh, sh I, I I'll, I'll retweet it that from the other one instead because mm. i think this one i have do have a this is your trial twitter account mm. and i do try to use that more specifically for the show and mm. my this is your laugh Twitter account is my umbrella one and that's me and then yeah and I've got a com yeah actually I've, I've got a specific comedy auction one as well so I am being mm. more um deliberate <laughs> yeah but it's, uh, it's it's admin isn't it <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah that's the problem I mean another thing I was thinking about when I was when I was writing notes for your thing is um you, you you've obviously got the comedian there for longer than the actual show time you know they have to turn up a bit early you know prep them a little bit you know like oh this one's a birthday party or whatever it would be um mm. and and my thought was if you were to record let's say 10 sound bites from the comedians just like sort of to camera you know uh come come to the next trial and then like the date of it or whatever it would be you 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 could put them out over certain periods of time that allow people to sort of see what's happening where it's going um who, who's involved because you obviously yeah. have uh, w one of the things we were talking about is how you're looking at basically sticking to your regulars because you know now who can do it well maybe getting the old person in yeah. you but you know you know who, how it works and so yeah. obviously as a product in a weird way you kind of a bit like how there are maybe 20 or 30 comedians who do the panel show circuit yeah. you know they're going to keep getting better and so it's going to become harder for new people to break in yes. because ultimately they're going to get the practice in yes. so if you're going to stick to the uh, a regular group of let's say five people that you rotate there's there's an opportunity to bring their personality out into social media as well and their and they're, uh, you know, even even in like 10, 15 second clips of, you know, my gavel's, my gavel's ready, what are you bring to it? Or, or, you know, yeah, like, yeah, you know. I mean, there's done some things like that before and um, it's often, yeah, maybe not, not found the one that particularly works. I mean, it's difficult with, maybe because even then there's still a lot of different things that acts are doing anyway. But I guess because there's, I, I, there's not a lot of consistency despite the maybe despite appearances mm -hmm. or um there's not a lot of consistency with any of the activities that i've ever been organizing and doing you know there's been little <laughs> there's been little patches of oh there's a run here of so many monthly shows mm -hmm. on this so then there's this is going going to happen then people drop out as well and um and i've committed things to you know to different people and then i might have made more more than enough effort to try and promote it with i mean just as an example and tim doesn't mind this but you know he was on he was in the poster one year the poster for fringe mm. wasn't there mm. wasn't there but he was there all year and that was you know unfortunately he had to pull out last minute mm -hmm. so i've i've learned i mean it was a great picture of him and he mm. still told the show but yeah, making too elaborate a campaign and then it doesn't work. You mm. know, there's only so many hours in a day and yeah, you know, what yeah. to do. But yeah, I've done I've done I've done things before and after shows with with acts. You know, just getting photos sometimes. But you know, you it's 
there's always packing up there's always you know <laughs> yeah. there's always actually oh, i want a show's finished no, i don't want to do anything more oh, as well and yeah, yeah, yeah. so no i understand what you're like you know what you say but um i feel like i've tried so many different mm -hmm. things and um and some have worked okay well why don't we so like as a sort of rounding up thing why don't we talk about things that you've tried that you think have in your definition failed so we can kind of break down why they didn't work maybe what went wrong or, or yeah. maybe how they might work for other nights but just didn't work for yours in in marketing or pro, or just general production or just i was talking social media and marketing, social media so, yeah um i think what one one th i mean because i've always had mixed bills and um different comedians on with different shows and do it's it's i guess it's changed i think that it's changed now how keen people are to retweet their their selves as attached to a show yeah. um i think that was that was a good thing for a while certainly mm -hmm. for for me and it's um you know and i think that the there comes a point when i think it's just come a point generally that people are looking after the, their own yeah. image and their own brand they can't be attached to and you know and some some communities have told me that they've um how they um need to be only promoting their own things um, right. so that's something that has changed in i've you know i've noticed and so that definitely is a strategy that i i say i've never relied on it but i don't use i don't expect much mm. from from that and because the comedian's name doesn't sell the show the show sells no the it's show. more it will it's it's you know it's all about getting trying to get your message out wider and so right so by uh, uh, tagging associating somebody else that you know you get into their audience and get into their followers and so right. but um they if the more that c different acts are involved with lots of different things the the um it can dilute their own projects mm -hmm. and i think i think acts are sharing themselves less right in ways or you know in the, they you know and, and, and often you'll find you know some some acts have already decided they don't want their image tanked or their you know two okay. things and so there's obviously a that that becomes a, a tipping point for mm -hmm. um how many times can i be i'm getting bored of all these things that i'm attached to completely um the thing that i uh, was going to ask you about was uh whether things like google ads work whether facebook ads work whether there was a particular platform you feel uh either because sometimes so for me i find uh twitter gets me more engagement than any other platform mm -hmm. but i find ticket sales come from facebook so that's that's a really mm. interesting one for me i think that's partly because my facebook is my my Facebook. I don't have a page anymore. So people who add me on there or people who find me on there in the end and sort of I accept the ad of are people who have seen me repeatedly and so people who are more likely to come back. Whereas Twitter, maybe I'm not in their city, maybe they don't know what I'm doing, maybe they're less emotionally invested in me and what I'm doing as a job. So things like that is like it's like where where yeah. where so for example on paper I could class Twitter as a fail because it doesn't sell tickets yeah. or it doesn't sell yeah. many tickets. Whereas or for example my main list for example that that sort of has five to ten percent return rate of people buying tickets which on paper you know you might think is a fail but the more i've spoken to people actually that's quite high for for people buying tickets in terms of say i email 100 people 10 people will buy a ticket that's that's quite nice to or five to ten people you know so uh so there's part of me that's like you know investing more time in my main list than anything else because that yeah I'm, even though I, no one can see that and no one else you know knows what's going on with that it's uh yeah okay um my biggest Failure, just as a general thing, is not creating a mailing list. Right. What an idiot. And even, <laughs> I can't honestly believe it. Are you heckling your past self? <laughs> oh, well, just uh, still, I still can't. I mean, I've got people coming in, filling in pieces of paper, printed mm. pieces of paper with accusations about themselves. You could put their email address in there. I know, well, yeah. I mean, there is a slot. There is a slot that it yeah, is yeah. there, but they, um, I just not gone and copied them i've just you know you've not typed them out i've not typed you know and i've got i've sort of had little waves of mm. trying to gather them but i've never ordered tidied it i've lost mm. a lot of those <laughs> yeah, and things like that and just got so many different accusation sheets and it's like oh, mm. i just put this just gone in the bin and it's like oh i've just i've wasted so much of that contact 
gathering um and i think i just thought that whatever facebook friends and twitter accounts that's that that's that'll do but i've not got a a mailing list that i run or organize and i should have that's that's a big mistake yeah with facebook i think I've tried. I don't think I've really cracked how to do the ads well on that. And when I've and I've have done Google Ads, and that that was quite expensive in the end. And I think I didn't spend enough time looking into how to get the best of it. I did get lots of phone calls, um, but it was generally people. I did a, I did an ad that was for Christmas a comedian com- comedians for Christmas. You know, it's trials mm-hmm. for Christmas parties. Christmas um, trials, yeah, yeah. But there was, it was the phrase comedians that just got loads of inquiries, people looking for comedians, and it was generally right. for charity events. Okay. You know, and I'm not a, an agent. I did manage to redirect bookings to people. Um, mm. That was, in, but I'm thinking, oh, God, I've missed a, a goal here, open goal here. I would go back to Google Ads, I think, if you get the mm. some experience or not someone to help you with the the seo and all of that something specific so that's something i would definitely go back to some of the ticket sites i found skiddle was supply that that delivered some audiences that i'd never i, I yeah i've only used them like once but they mm. suddenly brought people i never knew i'm not quite sure how that worked i need to look at them again design my night they have been good and they at times hoop for the family show but those you know sometimes they sort of want more from the ticket sites you want them mm. to share but they sell all yeah. different services and um design might not try that they have like yeah. you know, sort of their city pages and i quite like that and they have their um you know they have lists you know like coming up this weekend and whatever i know skiddle do that a little bit which is maybe how that happened so for me mm. whenever i'm on the coast or whether i'm like sort of traveling around southern to london right. that usually is the place that gets people in whereas okay. in the midlands i find eventbrite's quite popular so it, it i think it's just whoever app they've been you yeah, know people right. want to be targeting yeah i guess um oh, there's so much still to learn though yeah isn't there? i think just when you think oh i think i'm getting it i know i still feel like i know nothing oh and, no so yeah so. um what i've i've spent i spent a lot on facebook ads one for for a period and didn't really know what i was doing and oh, I, I bought an ad in um viz magazine some years ago yeah. which was cool to have and they mm. persuaded me because they you know had a deal on but i don't think that was worth it i don't <laughs> know what that was for do you think the reason why you're not doing a mailing list is because mailing list has a lot of, like at this at the start anyway has an initial learning curve that's harder than facebook ads because facebook ads in my you know I, I do them all the time where you sort of fill out what you're after essentially you're like age range gender whatever it is and then they just go out whereas with a mailing list i had to learn how their back end works how a form would look on my website how to filter it down so i can email you know certain people in different cities and now i know how to do it it's piss easy and it makes my life a you know a lot happier but is it is that what is that what's or is I'm, it just it's, i'm i am not great at attention to detail at all and i am impatient get bored or I do, I, it needs to be immediate and so yes it's more oh god i'm just I, identifying my failings um <laughs> But I think delegating is probably a, a strategy um, and what often we independent producers, creators do is we cannot help but try and do everything. And, you know, often we don't have the choice because mm. it's, um, it's our thing. Yeah. But I think I've had my best bits of periods of um, success is actually when letting go and mm. letting, you know, having... Um, other people um, in the team and on board mm-hmm. and I think um, there's it's something that I think it's you, you can find those people mm-hmm. there's some very keen st- uh, students looking for work experience found that I've got a, there's a website which I've been using and looking at called Magnet that's um, that's good for that this is what one of the the entrepreneurial scheme right. showed me um, people on that were getting interns from mm. through this site and um, so that that's yeah that's a tip that I've I've not fully 
<laughs> I'm not fully mm. taken on board, but I see it. Yeah, I, I think the, the challenges are, I think so many, you know, performers are multimedia as well mm. now and, you know, or ha- have always been and, you know, do a bit of filming, bit of mm-hmm. recording and, and I think it's, it's great that they can be, you know, super productive with that. And the, but the ones that really take advantage are the ones that form groups and mm. collaborations and, you know, like the, like the weirdos mm. and um, certainly there's, there's a, been, I've been doing quite a bit of stuff with different acts with Ebden management, you know, I they're know very, yeah, yeah. They're very Ebden, yeah. doing p- podcasts and things together yeah. and, um, and videos and sketches and I think, um, I think that's great for the sanity of anyone in yeah, this, in yeah. the business, it's not you by yourself, no, so totally. much of the time it is yeah, on yeah, the stage, yeah, yeah. but um, yeah, finding those other other specialists as well it's something i'm trying to do more of is is collaborate more with people and i'm looking at starting a podcast network to try and like share audiences and stuff because you know i mean i'm with acast the network um and they they do they they are great for what they do but in terms of sharing audiences they don't really do as much cross promotion as i'd like so you know i'm i'm trying to set something up where where, you know if you if you if you're at the same sort of ish level or you're or you're you're in the same area at least because you know there's some podcasts that are still growing but they're in the same area I want to see if we can kind of work together and see if that'll work and a few people have approached me and been like yeah I'd love to get involved because I, I think that's the you know we if you let's say you have a thousand followers and someone else has a thousand followers there might be a hundred on each that would be interested in both of you yeah and it doesn't make sense why if I could gain a hundred and you can gain a hundred and then maybe later on we realize oh actually we're you know there's actually worth doing a gig together here because there's a hundred people in each one you know if there's 200 people and there's a 30 seat room we could probably you know sell yeah. it out between us so so I, I, I you know it's, it's sort of weird when you were saying before that some comedians like to be a bit uh i mean i know i know that vibe of like i don't want to promote too much of other things because i'm already doing my own thing and i'm already doing my own tour and and stuff. so it's kind of it's kind of, i think it's a balancing act for me personally where i want to retweet some clubs but if i'm doing a tour date on the same week i might not retweet all of their tweets because like you know I'm, i mean i've yeah there's a, there is a it does feel like there's a there's a sense of performance feeling that it's competitive or that there's um you know and, it, and it's always hard to get it's always a challenge to get get enough people going to your own thing mm. I mean so, but certainly in Edinburgh even shows that are on at the same time as yours people are rarely going to it's not it's not one or the other that forget mm. that night if they've gone to your show that night tell them to go to the other show yeah. at the same time another night yeah, I mean yeah. all that if you but it's 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 all the sometimes the lack of um or the, the fear or the that I sometimes hear of um yeah c- competition and I, I, it's not everyone's so different if they're gonna every act and yeah. every show is is different it's not competing it's just a mm. time slot people will go to something that's on at the time that mm. suits them it doesn't they're not completely they're not that discerning <laughs> M- most of the people that I recommend a I like the work of and b if they're gonna go to them they're not gonna go to me do you know what I mean like if you're in the mood for let's say Adele Cliff doing one liners you're not gonna come see me mm-hmm. you know if you want to see Jos Norris doing his uh, m- m- uh, salad uh, fruit yeah. salad you're not gonna come see me if you're gonna see you know what I mean so it's it, it, it's uh, it's, and that's not a cat- that's not me doing that strategically. You know, I'm mm. not I'm not you know picking Beck Hill because she's so different to me. It's because I like their work and and it, and, and and also I don't see people as competition in that way. Mm. I, I, you know, I I get compared to people in reviews. You know, mm. some, some, someone in a review compared me to James Veach recently, and I'm like, I don't get a TV screen out next to me and talk about my, you know, flatmates and where I don't. It's, is it because I'm a white man with glass? Like, is that all you, you know? Yeah. Sort of weird? I, got, I got compared to Stuart Lee in a review, and I was like, I'm nothing. Uh, what, they called me a skinny Stuart Lee, and I was like, okay, I'll take skinny. I'll take skinny. <laughs> yeah, I'll take yeah. skinny. Take what you everything, yes. Yeah. yeah. But frankly, I've nothing like him. And, and you know, it, it's, a, it's a weird. I remember emailing that review going, Are you sure that was for me? Because <laughs> I don't think that's the thing. But it, it's that thing where I think it's e- I think that's just them using a shorthand to make it easier for the for the reader because like you said audiences don't always know who they're watching they don't always know they know a big name yeah. and so they want a, an easy comparison for that but I don't think there's that much competition and if there is that much competition you should be more worried about the fact your act isn't unique enough yeah just do your show that, that it isn't standing out than yeah. the competition you should be changing yours to make it more interesting so yeah. there isn't competition well, they're, they're all um, yeah there's, they're, well there's 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 no competition Competition. It's not a competition. Do you know audiences will come or they won't, and it's either fits into their schedule or they're not. It's, you you can't get in the heads of one or the other. And if you've if you've helped another, you can 
be winning that if that was a competition that generosity is is admirable because if you're mm. recommending somebody who's yeah good um they'll, they'll have if they're listening to you anyway i don't know i don't know i'm, I'm sort of going on circles no, with, no, with this but um i think there's can be a bit too much paranoia just yeah do the best you can <laughs> Mm, completely Um, I'm going to do the last quick fire questions what's one unpopular opinion you have about the comedy industry I I think the uh, unpopular something about comedy or that irritates comedy industry that irritates me is the there's a certain fear of being called a sellout or how you make decisions that are um against the art or a i i think there's a lot of unnecessary worry about being thought of as being a sellout or having betrayed the craft or as if i mean i love the romance of the idea that you know comedians are um, soothsayers or prophets or you know their um, knowledge and but they're not all that and it's it shouldn't be taken too seriously so be to sell you know you can sell yourself you're allowed to sell yourself it's not i think i've maybe i've just had you know had some experiences with different comedians because i'm not i am selling <laughs> selling is important and i don't i'm not the artist so it can be frustrating when some performers are don't want to do some things because it they'll feel like it'd be selling themselves out. okay makes sense what is the biggest misconception people have about you <laughs> um <laughs> oh god I, well maybe if if they think i'm at all organized <laughs> um i share that one by the way <laughs> yeah i i have i have moments but i'm 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 generally winging it and um i'm quite fearless and will give it all a go but i'm yeah I'm not very organised. Um, who do you think is the most underrated person in the industry? I think in many ways, prob- probably Tom Tuck. I know he's, um, he's, he's incredibly talented and I don't think that's doubted, or, but I think he might have um, missed certain breaks when he should have had them. And, and I think, you know, he's, I think he's might have created a bit of a reputation for not being hardworking, but he's, he's super hardworking and committed and despite appearances, I think it's a, it's a misconception. So I think Tom Tuck should have, should, should be more successful. I think mm-hmm. he is super successful, but mm. you know, I think he could have, might have felt that he, could have been more somewhere i don't know mm-hmm. more tv something like that get him, get him, he should be doctor who he should be doctor <laughs> who. um if you had an extra hour in the day how would you spend it oh god so I, I should actually do nothing i should meditate in fact i should meditate i know i should do something like yoga or meditation just take a take a breather i know this would be really healthy for me i and if i had it there'd be no ex- that extra hour there'd be no excuse i should just do that i think i'll just continue doing just a bit more of the same <laughs> messy biz, um stuff that i fill in all the other hours with fair if you could well normally i'd ask if you could go back to your just before your first gig and give yourself one bit of advice what would you do what would you say for you i suppose that'd be different so maybe if you go back and give yourself one bit of advice before you ran the first trial what would you say to yourself i don't i wouldn't i wouldn't say anything to myself because i think the you just stand there make yourself weird. yeah <laughs> i just say you know just enjoy this because it's it's gonna you're gonna do more of them you know i probably i think i probably believe that then anyway but i'm i don't think i will che- start a mailing list do the mailing list <laughs> <laughs> pay attention to doing gathering the names oh yeah Oh, yeah, that's it. Mailing list, that's it. Okay. What is one? Th- well, I was going to say, what's one thing you wish you were better at? But I think you're going to say mailing list, aren't you? <laughs> well, that's not a that's not a skill in itself. In a one thing, I mean, that's just a. There's a. I think I would like to been better at my own confidence of performing. I'm not a performer. I'm I've I'm not a. I'm not very eloquent or focused, and this. this part of my condition but you know I think just to public speaking I mean this is that's a general a general thing I wish and that maybe that's why I love working with comedians and people who are excellent at it it, hoping some of it might rub off one day and but yeah that's that's a thing through my life I'm pretty good in social situations Mm. and but soon as I'm put on soon as I've ever been on stage or put in front of an audience to do to present something I 
just freeze unless I'm hypnotized. <laughs> Listen, that's that, that was I was hypnotized a couple of years ago and did a show <laughs> a whole hour on stage hypnotized wow. and that was amazing. So I so yeah, I'd I'd like that feeling. Yeah, being hypnotized. That's what I'd like to have the skill to be able to be constantly hypnotized. To be constantly hypnotized to <laughs> do a to perform. Yeah. 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 Um last question then. If you could give one bit of advice to a couple of thousand comedians who'll hear this who maybe want to start a, a themed show in some maybe not an improv show but a themed show what would you say to them and it can be it can be either or the best advice you've been given or just a bit of advice that you've learned sort of through do something on what you know don't try and think you've thought of something that no one else has thought of and because because somebody else will have thought of it because it's what they know so always focus on what you know hopefully you know something that's a bit different to most people and that's what makes it you know that's how you can own it and that's how you can be confident about it so you know clearly for me law was something mm. that I knew more than most mm. um, but I have having worked in TV and developing mm. ideas and stuff people come to you and say oh I've got this idea for a thing mm. that they don't know anything about that thing and you and it's like they've yeah do what you know I think that's the same for writing jokes so as well isn't yeah, it yeah, it's, yeah. You know, it's a starting point yeah but I think when it comes to <laughs> theme in a night it's you know I mean I I run, I run a, a kink friendly comedy night yeah. in London and that has led to a lot of people finding out that I'm quite kinky but they were. I've, I feel like it comes out in my show anyway so it's not really you know but it's what I know yeah. and it's what I do whereas you know and I'm starting a dog friendly comedy night and I think most people know I fucking love a dog yeah. so I'm I, you know it's it's whereas you know if I tried other things I think it's slightly harder to to sell you know what I mean like you, yeah because you've got to sell it ultimately and if you're not it's, you know it's why a lot of PRs say I have to come and see the show and if I don't like the show I can't really work with you even if I think you're a nice person and you're funny mm. it's just it's, what am I going to do you know they're, they're going to re- see past it immediately yeah I mean you know Jess Foster doing oh, Hoovering yes. and you know she, she, she loves food yeah, yeah. she's awesome yeah, um, yeah. you know I do, I'll do one about Sabutio I'll do one about yo-yoing you know these are things that I know I am mm. into and do mm. or um yeah I, I, it's got to be something that you know and then I mean like you know the, my new show Comedy Auction I knew a bit about that <laughs> you know I knew it so and it fit and it followed the a similar sort of format to trial so don't try and invent something that you think is just oh that'd be a weird idea and that's mm. putting two things together and no no have some weight behind the mm. topic or the theme or the idea that is already there yeah okay well thank you very much for coming on I really appreciate it and uh, enjoyed it see you soon that was David. I loved throwing about 30 ideas at him and seeing what sticks. I hope that we continue to work together because I have just so many ideas for the night that he's putting on and for the content that he produces. I learned loads about crowdfunding, about what does and doesn't work according to his perspective and experience. As I mentioned, Kickstarter are coming on the podcast. So if you have any questions for them, I've put a link in the show notes, but your best bet is to search for the Ask the Industry podcast group on Facebook and check me your questions there i think he's done so much in a short space of time i loved how targeted he's been about the future of this is your trial and how he continues to promote the shows to corporate clients while balancing it with tour shows at festivals like the edinburgh fringe and beyond you should go and totally check out that show if it's in a city near you i know he's putting a lot on in london i'm actually doing one in a few weeks time i think i'll i'll find out the date and put it in the in the show notes so you can have a look at that i'm very excited to try that out if you have an office christmas party coming up and you're feeling, and you're looking for something a little bit different I'd also recommend dropping him an email. I'll put a link to his email address in the show notes as well. If you've enjoyed this, I'd highly recommend two episodes that are very similar. The one with David Moholland, the uh, founder and uh, Big Cheese at the Soho Comedy Club, and Barry Ferns and Sarah Pierce, the two of the founders of Angel Comedy, about how they crowdfunded the last bit of money they needed to launch one of the most exciting comedy clubs in London for a long time. So I would check both those episodes out. The Ask the Industry podcast has been a fruit that got in gravity's way production for the internet. All elements were created by me, comedian Simon Kane. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much for subscribing. And thank you very much for rating and donating if you do. I'll see you all in about 14 days time. Bye.